You love podcasts. The stories, the laughs, the unexpected turns. But when this episode ends, the silence starts. Not anymore. Audiobooks.com turns that silence into your next great adventure. With over 450,000 titles, from bestsellers to hidden gems, your love for listening just found its new best friend. And because you already know the joy of audio, we're giving you three free audiobooks to start your journey. Imagine your favorite podcast, now with unlimited episodes. That's audiobooks.com. Keep the story going. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. Because for podcast lovers like you, the end of an episode is just the beginning. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E. Ahoy hoy, everybody, and welcome to Talking Simpsons, where it's your fault we're old. <laughs> That's a reference, by the way. This is Bob Mackey, your host of this lovely show. Who else is here today? Wow, you think I was going to do it again? Oh, I love it. I want it every time I talk. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm Chris Antista, host of Laser Time Show. And I'm Henry Gilbert, host of Cape Crisis and a billion other things. Mm-hmm. And today, by the way, this is Laser Time's uh, chronological exploration of The ah. Simpsons, and thanks for joining us on this magical voyage. And today's episode is Bar- versus Thanksgiving, which aired November twenty second, nineteen ninety, very close to Thanksgiving. It that was year. Thanksgiving. It was. It yeah, was. They oh, say wow. it on the commentary, and I remember it myself. It was aired on wow. Thanksgiving. I guess that was a Thursday, so yeah. I was probably eating some leftover turkey at this point. So You're probably Chris, watching a shitload of football, Bobby. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Even then, I didn't like it. <laughs> well, because there's old. Yeah, I'll talk about it in the last. So episode, please, so. Chris, what happened on this magical day, Thanksgiving of nineteen ninety? What was going on twenty five years ago, for Christ's sake? <gasps> oh boy, Bobby. Oh, this week in Simpsons history, John Major is elected as Britain's next prime minister. MTV mm. refuses to air Madonna's Justify My Love video featuring sultry scenes in a bed. Mm. Uh, and a little indie darling called Home Alone tops the box office. Wow. wow. Justify My Love. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was, didn't she release that to VHS? I think so. And then it uh, took off like insanely. Was that the one that Wayne and Garth made fun of? Yes. With the, yeah, with the guy yeah, with the, the black and white uh, yeah. video. Bob, did we do Madonna in karaoke? I think I yeah, I, I sung like, like a prayer. prayer. That's my standard, by That's the way. We, we, no, I did that with you. We, oh yeah! Thanks for right. remembering our duet. You'll hear that a lot when I do karaoke. By the way, really, like a like prayer. I, that's my favorite Madonna song. It's the best song she yeah. does. But um, I'm only speaking as a white man in his 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Star is pretty good too. It's pretty good. It's I like pretty it. Great. Also, uh, Madonna's really good though. That according to Family Guy, that's like your gay test. If you say anything other about Madonna other than her looks, then you're gay. I've got a girlfriend. I swear. <laughs> So why are we talking about? Why am I talking about Family Guy? I would show? also fuck Madonna. Mm. Their gay wow. barometer. <laughs> You're putting that out there. Sure. <laughs> uh, is she happily married? Who knows? We'll find out on our Madonna cast. She does what she, does what she wanted. Never yeah. been a cast member on. Uh, never been a guest star on The Simpsons. Strangely, that's really strange. It does seem weird. At Someone this point. with her star power. But yeah, this is Bart versus Thanksgiving. I want to say this was written by George Meyer. Mm-hmm. Yep. His first Simpsons episode that he was credited as a writer. Sole credit. I and, think um, he had a season one half credit. Henry, how would you describe? George Meyer's like attitude so, and writing style. I love George Meyer. He's my favorite. And one of his things is he actually had a one of the first things I ever read about a writer on The Simpsons was a profile, I believe, in the New Yorker on him. That's right, yeah. That he was the darkest guy from a screwed up family and he he hates the rich, he hates authority, he's not a fan of his family, and his his episodes are and his jokes are some of the darkest and meanest ones the show's ever had. I do feel like this, and this smartest this episode is really about the Meyer family more than the Simpsons. <laughs> yes. But yeah. um, you'll learn a lot from the commentary. Meyer says that this the inspiration came to this because it was a constant conversation in his is in his home about who ruined what holiday. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you have to figure out who ruined what holiday. That's what makes that's what makes Makes comedy writers tragedy and broken <laughs> homes, but also David or, or Harvard or apparently. Harvard too. But I mean, they can combine and join forces. But David Silverman <laughs> also directed this episode, oh. and we'll see some really crazy David Silverman animation later. Like I think it ranks up there with The Raven in terms of yeah. ambition and like just insane camera angles and lots yeah. of pullouts, yeah. lots of like like lots of awesome reveals done within the frame. Mm-hmm. I yeah, really... if if Brad Bird doesn't count as a director because he really only fully directed Executive one consultant. episode. Then David Silverman is the best director. I believe so. Like, like he's he, the MVP. Richmore's great. Jim Reardon's great. Mm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like all those original guys are like on top of their game at all times. But Silverman is probably the most expressive, the most mm. distinctive director. But the, this first, Bob, would you call him the glue? 
Um, I think the glue is like you don't stand out, really. You like. I think <laughs> I- Stop fighting with your sister! She took my glue! Uh, it's not yours, Bart! This is family glue! <laughs> Stop it, you two! This is Thanksgiving, so glue friendly, or I'll take your glue away, and then no one will have any glue to glue with. Sorry, I, I appreciate your segue, way. Chris, but I feel like Mark <laughs> Mark Kirkland is the glue of the Simpsons directors. Oh. He is the most reliable, <laughs> and not not the, the Phil most Hartman. Pretty the... much, yeah. Like he does his job, but he doesn't really like rise above everyone anyone else. Are you really, so excited to get to Phil Hartman's first appearance. In the oh, show. when is that happening? Soon, I'm not right? Sure. It's, yeah, it's this I, season. I, I think it is the um, Bart I think gets by a car, right? In two episodes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, the oh, Lionel Hutz. I'm so excited for that. The, I was thinking <laughs> of the first Troy McClure, but that's not until the. Uh, is it the Soapbox Derby Racer? Or, oh God! Or is that just the first uh, Doctor Troy McClure? Was showed up in. Um, I thought about the uh, the the well, nuclear Cryuma. the nuclear power plant <laughs> educational. Oh film? yeah, he's in that one. He yeah. was in that too. Okay. No, wait, no, that's the isotope guy. It's not. He's not in that. <sighs> gonna, he's in the gonna, chocolate factory. Going to drag you back to the thing. Please help me. Episode. Please help me. Plenty of time to talk episode. about this. Yes. Yeah, so the first act is just like really super observational Thanksgiving yeah. things. Like there is no plot. Just like here's what happens on Thanksgiving. Homer watches football. Marge cooks. There's family members that show up. Just like it's a lot of very like specific holiday jokes without a lot of guidance. I think, which is fine because there's oh, a, lot, yeah. like, a lot of observational humor in the early Simpsons. And, and like I've said before. I've commented on a couple of things the Simpsons have done as Rockwellian. Mm. Uh, and at the same time, the President of the United States is slamming the Simpsons as a bad example of television. I find situations like this something I am nostalgic mm-hmm. for. Football on television on Thanksgiving? That doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> no, not we really. Have big Thanksgiving. Well, no, I mean, there's a game each year. No, no, no but Detroit, like, that's... It's not it's yeah. not one of two channels and like the only thing taking I, over I everything. Yeah. Now I put on Turkey Day on YouTube with yeah, Joel Hodgson. Yeah, exactly. Or like or like my family just puts something on Netflix or even yeah. like, even like a fake fire log next to a real fireplace. Uh, I love those fake fire logs. And and like we we don't this doesn't happen anymore. The men the men and the women aren't separated for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so the kids ha- are helping. Yeah. So they have a normal Thanksgiving mm-hmm. then Bart ruins something and doesn't care Mm -hmm. runs away and then the family chases after him and then he finally comes out right and this is also just again for me i've told you the i was bart uh scenario before but like this this i feel like happens to me to this day i am bart (laughs) all the time and yes never mind we'll get i felt more like lisa in this episode too. yeah Uh, even though lisa i think like watching it now she's she's less redeemable than i remember because mm -hmm. she was very like wrapped up in her own problems without realizing the scope of how little her problems matter yeah though she's used to being ignored all the time and this is just another moment of that that's true it really punctuated her her life of being just ignored but were there any were there any moments in this first act Yes. Which is really just just like observational Thanksgiving oh, things, where they're, they're preparing food and watching TV. I I've always never liked the Thanksgiving Day Parade, but still watch it. It still happens. I isn't love it. Absolutely, yeah. still happens. It ha- and I was forced. You know what? I was forced to research it re- like recently, somewhat recently, for the every Aladdin reference. Oh, wow. every every genie impression in Aladdin, and the whole internet thinks it's Mary Hart mm-hmm. uh, in Aladdin doing the, during the Prince Ali sequence, and I'm. She never hosted this part. He says, Ju-, like, and then I'm like so in message Mary boards Hart. disputing. Okay. But the internet thinks it like, like this is not important. I mean, it was this some Today show. So look, and I, yeah, okay. You the, I, the clip, the clip of this, I this is my favorite clip of two on screen. I this, love is this Phil and Marty. It's so good. This is my quote of it the episode. So yeah, good. I love it. Uh, we want me to play the clip. Please up. play the clip. Also, my quote. Well, I don't know if it gets any better. Than I will not talk. Quote yeah. um, but this is line of the show. That's the joke. Uh-oh, here comes our friend, Bullwinkle J. Moose. <laughs> Bullwinkle's antler sprung a leak. Uh-oh, looks like old Bullwinkle's kind of got a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly did, Bill. <laughs> Wait, what did that mean? Did what I say make sense? Well, no, not really, Bill. <laughs> Boy, now I know how to pilgrim's spell. <laughs> What are you talking about, Bill? <laughs> That's this, one of like four moments in this episode. That I feel like Dan and Harry are just goofing, <laughs> yeah, and they animated it. Or, or they're making fun of me and all the game streams I do because I feel like those are the exact things just I say. To fill t- yeah, it's just filling air, baby. What oh. is that joke I just said? Did that make any sense? Make any oh, sense? let's I'll just forget so about it. Yeah, <laughs> let's move on. Yeah, no, I well, as a kid, I definitely. 
I love the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade because it was. I love seeing the balloons. The I'm, balloons. That's I was it, waiting though. for the Spider Man balloon. I was waiting for the Bullwinkle balloon. But the but the like. Oh man, here's the touring company for Annie doing their famous. <laughs> like no, change the channel. That's but, that's what's gone wrong with the NBC's coverage of the Macy's Parade, mm-hmm. which is that it was first like okay, thirty minutes of Broadway productions, then an hour, and then it really turned into like ninety minutes it of sucks. Broadway, yeah. and then you'll finally get to see. I just want to see big blit. balloons. Also, one of my favorite clips from this entire episode. One Thing. I think Marty questions Bill later, where he's like, "Now I know how the, how the Pilgrims fell." He's like, "That still doesn't make any sense." <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, please, th- please continue. This, this, this of like the parade balloons, a great joke and a great in joke on the popularity of the Simpsons. Again, right after the the T shirt line from yes. uh, Dancing Homer, we we have this one. So the like just to give you some context, at the very end of this clip, when they're not looking at the television, a Bart Macy's Day parade balloon floats by, which was in the Macy's Day parade. It that was year. that year after one year of yep. popularity. Less than Who the hell is that? Bullwinkle. Who? Wait a minute. Who's that? Underdog. Don't you know anything? Well, I know it wouldn't hurt him to use some cartoons made in the last 50 years. Don, this is a tradition. If you start building a balloon for every flash in a pan cartoon character, you turn the parade into a farce. And then we immediately see Bart floating over. And I'm sure, yeah. like, in the commentary, we're like, oh, here comes Bart Simpson. He's up to some trouble, isn't he? Oh, what's yes. he going to do now? Do you, do you realize this is my second favorite uh, Simpsons parade float, balloon float uh, joke? <laughs> yeah. What's the other what? one? The, the absolute scratchy 70s. No. No. It's, it's them being the parade in Springfield. Like, oh, we always get, like, the fourth re- the fourth rent cartoon balloons in the Simpsons oh. parade. Like, Marge's like, what? What do you mean? There's Funky Winkerbean. Hey, <laughs> Funky! It's like, oh. Here, I think I remember Duckman's father was killed by a Bullwinkle balloon. Uh, that's, right. that's canon, by the way. We look forward to our Duckman podcast and when I can get that off the ground. I, that's a really hard clip for me to hear because I know when I watched it, I definitely I knew who, knew who Bullwinkle dog, Underdog yeah. is. But this yeah. is, that, I do feel like Homer now. Like mm. you don't know the fuck these people are. So what if they're not the kid from How to Train Your Dragon? <laughs> I think Marge also points out annoyed balloons. Like that's the Noid. He steals pizzas. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and not to harp on it, like uh, I said. I taped every episode of The Simpsons starting this season and watched them every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I missed this episode. Oh, and it probably because nev- it was Thanksgiving. Wow, and, and, and because it was Thanksgiving, it never aired again. Right, it never aired again. That is I nev- crazy. I never saw it in syndication. It was not rerun uh, throughout the course of that year. Chris, in the first like seventeen years of The Simpsons, I remember the one episode I missed, and that was Which one? Itchy and Scratchy Land. Oh, that sucks, Bobby. Yeah, I eventually wow. saw it again as a rerun, but I, I like it always like like just haunted me. Like yeah. I missed the no, first it, one, Simpsons. How did I do I'd this? In the promos, I knew there was a Thanksgiving episode. I knew that it involved Bart, especially, and that was really important to me. Right. And it was, it, yeah, it sucked. It did not air again that year. I didn't see it until syndication. Yes, missing a holiday episode was and a big deal back then. This is a good. This is a good setup to what's going to happen later. Just because I, I don't know. I don't know why. As I grow older, I connect more. I like whenever Lisa is being Lisa, a little kid. Mm. I, I just get really melty, and I do like she's making a, a centerpiece for the Thanksgiving uh, festivities. Maggie, I'm about to unveil my centerpiece to the family. It's a tribute to the trailblazing women who made our country great. See? There's Georgia O'Keeffe, Susan B. Anthony, and this is Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. I'm sure you haven't heard of her, but she worked her whole life to preserve the Florida Everglades. As one of the Simpson women, would you like to contribute something to it? Oh, thank you. That is not only a cool Lisa moment, it's a cool Maggie moment. It is. Maggie like, never gets any cool moments. It's funny that Maggie buys into it, too. And, and yeah. like, Marjorie Stillman Douglas, I have n- still never heard of her. Uh, That's the, growing the, up in Florida, Florida living with you a... Will uh, hear her name, oh, so you guys have heard of her. I mean, you guys are both Floridians. My, well, my father is yeah. the district attorney for the Game and Freshwater Fish Commission. I spent a lot of time in the Everglades. Oh, wow. Being coerced into doing a lot of reports on the Everglades. I absolutely have heard of her. <laughs> well, that I like that bit too because it feels like the kind of George Meyer uh, joke that's a very under-the-radar joke of like bringing up these forgotten feminists that nobody's heard mm-hmm. of whose names have probably never been said on a sitcom on a ever. Like, it's like getting away with, away with something. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe yeah. like Dick Cavett show during Super Bowl week maybe. like when no one else is watching. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Also, this scene and Bart's response to Lisa made me see certain parallels to online video game ethical conversations oh, because let me let me just get this out of here real quick okay so, henry i i did write she has a very sjw centerpiece yeah, lisa's <laughs> making a centerpiece that mm-hmm. celebrates that celebrates feminists it is in no way stopping uh thanksgiving 
Bart doesn't get it and destroys it and is like, who cares? And then I just saw the peril. You can see no, peril. no, no, no. It's just that, like it's hard not, to not miss them. I was going to bring them up at the end. Only at the end does this show reveal. Because again, I see a lot of myself in Bart. I wouldn't have intentionally destroyed no, the yeah. centerpiece, and I thought he didn't either. But he kind of cops to it at the end of the episode. Kind of, yeah, he kind of. And we'll did. get to that in a second. Yeah, no, he yeah. says he does, and he doesn't really understand himself, but. Before we get to that point, I do mm-hmm. want to talk about like the family members that we yeah. see. So we have Patty and Selma showing up, and they bring their own dish. Can I play the clip? Oh, Just please do. It's because the, It's the grossest dish I've ever heard Trout of. Trout almond de- Dean? Definitely didn't get it at the time. Okay. You brought food. Just a few things. Swedish meatballs. Mm-hmm. And my trout almond Dean. You knew that I was cooking a turkey. Which is fine. More power to you. It's just that some people find your turkey a little dry. Mm-hmm. And if they want an option, they'll have it. Mm-hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I sorry I don't have a clip of her, but um, is this the first appearance of Miss Bouvier? I Absolutely. think so, yes. No, it was an event for me it, of like, this is Marge's mom. We've so, never seen her yeah. before. That's what made it so irritating that I missed taping this episode I'm mm-hmm. guessing it was probably in Ocala at my grandparents watch, being introduced to Mystery Science Theater 2000 that's probably what was that's happening that's a great time to be alive and, yeah, seriously <laughs> like, why does 2015 suck so much Jesus <laughs> help Christ help us we want to be back in uh, the 90s <laughs> and, and I guess I, I missed taping this and it, the promos promoted that it wasn't mm-hmm. so much it's a Thanksgiving episode and you get to meet Mrs. Bouvier and there's a minor moment where she gets like the star treatment as in she, a build up she well, gets a build you see her hair first and then well her... you see a cab stop and a guy get out and let her out of the car I and... don't think the Bouvier thing is introduced until the way we was because that's a very yeah. Kennedy joke and, and do we even learn her name that her name no, is Jacqueline it's just her mom yeah it's just mom's Mar- Marge's mom I but this also showed that this was the first time Marge and her sisters ever disagreed on the show too mm-hmm. Like That's they right. hate Homer, yeah. but she never got mad at them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was always like, "Be nice to my sisters, Homer." But in this one, she's like, the, "Even even they have tension on this episode of them doubting her ability to make a, a good turkey." Which proven, Marge can't make a good turkey because no. they are basting the shit <laughs> out of it. Are, like, that yeah. is such a gross scene. In the <laughs> in, like at the time, I thought it was the most fart jokes I've ever seen in The Simpsons. <laughs> like, three Bouvier members like basting the shit out of a turkey. Oh, also, when I was a little kid, I don't want to make a Bukaki joke there, so Atta I won't. Boys. But uh, when I was a little kid, I definitely thought I was helping in the way Bart helps Marge as well. Um, like that. that is very observational. Like the kid yeah. that asks for every like minute, granular step of the process. I'm nominating this for my line of the show. That's the joke. It's broken, Mom. Mom, it's broken. 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 Mom, it's- if anybody hasn't, if there's no good remixes out there of that, there's nothing I'd like the show to influence more than the, someone to do a remix yeah. out of Mom, It's Broken. That is a great little line from Bart. Just it's, like the very like like impatient child attitude. Like, I'm going to turn this into a song because I just need an answer. It's wonderfully symbolic of who Bart is, and it's also very good evidence of who I was. <laughs> oh, and this also, before we get to when actual drama happens, mm-hmm. this is another big signpost of a George Meyer script. Gambling on football. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. This is the first time it's been introduced. It'll and happen a lot. They come to love it so much God is an entire it. episode is gambling yeah. on That football. was a really funny line that I meant to go back and grab. It's your daddy's favorite team, and I hope they lose by five points. <laughs> five like, and a half points. We did miss one thing, which, again, is a very George Meyer thing. It is like the personification of Marge's mom, where her, her one of her two lines is, I have laryngitis, so it hurts to talk, so I'll just say one thing. You never do anything right. Yes. And then she just right. goes into the house. <laughs> and Leave like me alone. I I'd, I'd really like to think like I, I didn't grow up in a like a hyper nice family, but like I like to think Simpsons conditioned people to not be this rude to one another. <laughs> like is that my family is not like this. Well, there was a, a facade of pleasantry until people had too much to drink on Thanksgiving, I, I think. think there's I think there's definitely a message in this episode of like you see the parents the grandparents who who handed down bad behaviors to their kids. That's true, yeah. Them. And then Homer and Marge are then passing that along to their <laughs> children. Like, there's the bit with Grandpa telling Homer he's lighting a fire wrong, To Like, it's bad parenting all the way down. I, and I do like the brief visit to the Springfield Retirement Palace, where it's like the following family members wish they could be here today. Oh, yeah, and then it's just, like, uh, depressing I mean, as heck. I no, that, can't, like, not to harp on my... My grandfather recently died. I'm 35 years old, and up until 18 months ago, had three out of four of my grandparents. You are totally out of grandparents now, right? No, I have one left. You have one left, okay. I have one left, but 
she has no facilities and is in this old folks home and this is where I spend every holiday now. I see and I definitely get that because we no, don't t- that... we don't take them out of there because yeah. uh, we got steps and no ramp I wrote, so, I, I wrote it's impossible I wrote that I think that old folks home is the most depressing thing yeah. ever in a Simpsons dude That's, it's it's so yeah. real and the Instagram I put there's no up, extra joke to it there's no hype no, thing. And I put an Instagram up uh, of the old folks home on Christmas Eve someone volunteering to play Christmas themes flatly on a clarinet mm-hmm. to people slumping over in their wheelchairs <laughs> and, wishing there was a TV on and every, Ooh, they wouldn't forget and I went like out to this. a bar and like people I haven't seen in years and like that was pretty awful what you posted on it <laughs> this made me feel really bad is this the first appearance of thank you for not discussing the outside that's world that's I was just about to ask that, I think it might be the first appearance of that, that sign joke, in general yeah. like it, that's, that, that has to be a George Meyer joke yeah, I, it feels, it feels like, like one it's, it's the only yeah. time the camera dwells on it but it's been in the background again okay. and again also when Homer says the hell with this mm-hmm. that, that also became like a motto <laughs> for me like Go like oh, the hell with this. But back at the Simpsons house, um, I just had this clip. It's called Bart is awful. <laughs> Bart! You don't even care. You don't even care. Oh. <laughs> All right, Bart. That's it. Go to your room now. Okay, I'll take some white meat and stuffing to go, and send up the pumpkin pie in about twenty minutes. I said no. Mom, do I have to? Yes, you do. I hope you're happy, Bart. You ruined Thanksgiving. It's a very stagey line, but yeah. it, it, it reminds me of talking to adults and authority figures. I learned very early on that no matter what society has told you, you don't actually have any authority over me and you can't starve me. Yeah. And it's like I you can, have to keep me alive. I don't have to apologize and I don't have to do what you ask me to and you're still going to feed me and I still get to do whatever I want. As a kid, I was on both sides of those things. Is I actually like... I felt like fuzzy emotions when lisa says you don't even care like i do now that hurt that hurt to hear but yeah but obviously as a kid i definitely was like oh i'm gonna say something snotty to yeah. my parents when they think they're disappointing i thought me. that was the best <laughs> thing i could do is yeah. like be funny and i'll just be oh, clever God. You. having a breakthrough on the mic i'm now. invincible <laughs> no, one thing <laughs> No one, one thing I noticed in this episode is uh, musically, like, um, they play the one Thanksgiving uh, carol I know, which I only know from the Mystery Science Theater promo. Like, we gather together, together to watch cheesy movies. Cheesy movies. Yeah. You can hear that song playing in the background of this episode. No. Wow, I know I it's like that. it's like a standard, like a Thanksgiving standard if there's one of them. But, like, it, it keeps popping up as, like, a, a, late, like a late motif or something like that. I like that. The, so, Lisa and Bart are not at the table anymore. Bart has burned Lisa's centerpiece that she worked very hard on uh, because it's SJ. W and doesn't deserve to exist. That's clearly what we do with other people's opinions. Right. Um, and I, Homer's prayer is the most pathetic thing I've ever heard in my life. And Lord, we're especially thankful for nuclear power, the cleanest, safest energy source there is, except for solar, which is just a pipe dream. Anyway, we'd like to thank you for the occasional moments of peace and love our families experience. Well, not today. Well, you saw what happened. No, oh, Lord, be honest. Are we the most pathetic family in the universe or what? Amen. I, I talk a lot about Simpsons sacrilegious jokes, but I do like the sincerity of like Homer just forgets and like, I'm talking to God here. Everybody shut up yeah. for a second. I think oh, I later saw, there's like a line that's it. like, Homer, no gossip. <laughs> like he's like gossiping with uh, God. What's I, up to? I didn't mean to cut it out, but it's Patty or someone saying, worst prayer ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and so then Bart goes to... There, there's a nice little interlude after Bart runs away that he... With Santa's Little Helper, which mm-hmm. they mentioned on the commentary that that was a choice of theirs that let's say his little helper was involved in their previous holiday episode yeah. christmas so they get him involved in the thanksgiving and i think he's also kicked out of the house for trying to steal a turkey leg or whatever you yeah. hear yes. that like adr line before he's kicked yeah. out of the house and joins Bart. That turkey leg. but yeah so then they go to uh burns's place and i wrote this down that i think this is the first time you visibly see the releasing of the hounds yeah. he said he'd release yes. the hounds on his previous one but this time you see and the it's, hounds it's visually i considered synonymous with releasing the hounds even though I, again i've not seen this episode as much as every other one the hounds like, are like these sleek killing machines yeah. that just like dive at you yeah, yeah. they did a great job they look like fucking like world war ii bombers yeah. at, at, at some and point and that overhead shot of them just like just like dwelling outside yeah. of the uh the, the hedges is really amazing david silverman again is fantastic and also i forgot that i you know we all remember evergreen terrace as mm-hmm. their address but i forgot that burns was on the corner of croesus and mammon wow which are, which are deities of greed that is true i i only knew about mammon croesus <laughs> eh? at all. is that yeah, greek I, or roman i don't know okay i didn't i should have looked that one up. i'm sure um, a commoner will I just let me have know. this quick clip because again i connect more with i want to be more lisa now mm-hmm. than i am bart <laughs> 
Uh, so I connect with her a lot. Uh, Jesus Christ, when we get to the Mr. Bergstrom episode, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> but th- like, I love this sequence. You saw me melt in Moaning Lisa when Marge... Marge has a good rapport with Lisa, and this is another instance of that. Lisa, I'm very sorry about what happened. Mom, I poured my heart into that centerpiece. Things like that always happen in this family. I've noticed that, too. <laughs> well, when you feel like coming down, we'll be there. I like, I like that sentiment, yeah, and I like sweet. just her playing the frets on this. Lisa is writing a parody of Allen Ginsberg's Howl. Named Howl of the, Howl of the Unappreciated. Uh, sorry, unappreciated. I saw oh. the best meals of my generation destroyed by the madness of my brother. My soul carved in slices by spiky-haired demons. <laughs> Meanwhile, and this is this is also evidence of me learning nothing. Mm. Bart is off having the greatest adventure of all time. Yeah. And, well, that, uh, by the way, they mentioned on the commentary that Ginsburg heard about that and, and did appreciate it. They I guess heard. he was still alive back then. Yeah. Wow. yeah. He, was, he held on for another. He was farting around for another. Like, That's true. So one of my favorite throwaway jokes I never noticed as a kid, um, what Bart goes, I actually did this too because I was a bad kid. Like, fuck you, I'm not getting a job. I'll go give some blood. Mm-hmm. And Bart does that to make 12 fucking dollars. That is true. Like, I gave plasma once and it was mm-hmm. such a depressing experience mm-hmm. that I never did it again. Like, yeah. I, there was one guy reading the same page of the Bible for like three hours while I waited. I'm like, oh, I don't like these people. I mean, they, a couple $12 of my, in 1990s. A couple of my loser friends are like, like, yeah, we don't even have to go to school or ever get jobs. Just give blood every day. And like, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> I don't think I have that much blood in me. You can't get blood once a month. I like, know. We yeah, were just speculating. Know, on being, right. on, we were trying to be losers. I don't the know blood was market was much more uh, burgeoning there back were, then. There were, so when Barco's on the other side of the tracks, it had one of my favorite sign gags to hmm. date, which is... It was called Massage Parlor, but massage was in quotes on the side. <laughs> oh, I missed like, that. Totally. Yes. Wow. It awesome. So but he goes funny. to give blood, and I love, I love this uh, exchange. Hey, you've got to be 18 to sell your blood. Let's see some ID. Here you go, dollface. Mm. Okay, Homer, just relax. <laughs> Ow! I don't know who that voice actor is. Me neither. Me neither. They have secretary or something. I don't yeah. know. But the, uh, okay, that's also they mentioned there's two things they cut on the commentary. that mm-hmm. uh, they, It wasn't clear on the commentary if they had cut it from the script or they cut it from animatics or even animated it. But mm. they said there was supposed to be a full scene inside the uh, blood donation place. And then when Bart passes out, there's supposed to be another dream sequence where Bart's at the first Thanksgiving. And they cut both of those things oh wow i forgot about that conceptually there uh though i also wrote down a kid passing out on skid row that is a horrifying like that horrifies it's pretty dark like if you examine like bart is found by two homeless men who like who are nice yeah they are very they're very charitable nice home home nice so i do like that they take his money without you know any kind of uh, reservations well also like because bart ends up at a homeless shelter and his family finds out where he (sighs) is because of television and like if if you're new to the show or didn't hear the first season on patreon.com slash laser time exclusive there because they made it happen uh Thank we talked about like there was there was an inside joke with the writers that didn't really that felt like didn't the audience didn't get is that kent brockman is always out mm-hmm. and oh, that's there's right, always yeah, another Scott christian ca- or there's always else, another yeah. guy is this the first kent brockman it appearance? is not the first kent brockman on camera because he definitely like for example he's in the crust he gets busted episode okay, yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> but this is i his did first, write down this fine, is, his first on location this shoot. is the first time they have occupied the same space as kent brockman and mm-hmm. he isn't just on television and he's mm-hmm. he's talked about by the simpsons family i love this oh this awful this fucking over like Indulgent yeah. news piece. <laughs> oh, we have lots of names for these people. Bums, deadbeats, losers, scums of the earth. We'd like to sweep these people into the gutter, or if they're already in the gutter, to some other out-of-the-way place. <laughs> oh, we have our reasons. They're depressing. They wear ragged clothes. They're crazy. They smell bad. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Wait, I'm going somewhere with this. So, every year on one lone conscience salving day, we toss these people... A bone. A turkey bone. bone. And that's supposed to make it all better. No, you won't find Freddy the Freeloader or Emmett Kelly or even Charlie Chaplin's <laughs> beloved little tramp down here. Pompous blow-dried college boy. <laughs> His girlfriend is the weather lady. You don't say. <laughs> now I'm interested again. It's, it's like, like couch talk. College boy is something you can't say after the 90s yeah. because everyone yeah. has gone to college, I think, at this point. It's, well, not, it's not a special thing. That, he would, of course. Yeah. Well, so well, one thing I found funny is that the Simpsons see this uh, this human interest story that Kent Brockman's doing, that, and that's how they notice Bart. But Lisa's 
Lisa's poem, The Howl of the Unappreciated, mm-hmm. is interrupted because it's like, Th- there's Bart! So, like, again, like, her yeah. moment is destroyed, which I love. Like, yeah. like even in even in defeat, just... like, Lisa cannot get one moment of sympathy. And I'll, I'll never yeah. say this to my sister in, in person, and to, to, to her herself, but she is <laughs> the nicest, sweetest person ever, and I constantly, inadvertently do mean things to her, and growing up got all the attention by being bad. <laughs> it, like, wow. over her amazing accomplishments. She made a Save the Whales Club in fourth grade. I'm like, wow, that's a lot. Yeah, for a fourth pussy grader. saved the whales. Dum dum dum. Gay, gay, gay. <laughs> that was me. And and like meanwhile, she was doing something great. And yes, and she, if I ever die and I've never told her something nice, I'm sorry. I was the Lisa <laughs> in that relationship with my sister. Were you? She was the Bart. Yeah. Well, she was the one who ran. Younger? Who ran away? I was younger. Yeah. yeah so I ran away a ton. So. Yeah. So was this the first Eddie and Lou? Was this I the, think so because it was. they're, they're not, not the right voices. The voices right are voices. swapped. Yeah. Like Lou has Eddie's voice and Eddie has Lou's voice. But they're visiting the Simpsons, the cops, by the way, in order to figure mm-hmm. out what happened to Bart yes. and like mm-hmm. try to kind of I guess press charges. And I, like I don't know. March had to, like what did you tell him? And she's like, I said that he ruined Thanksgiving. And they're like, Ugh, really? <laughs> like because yeah. yeah, like I, I don't yeah, know. I didn't do it. I understand, like, you. Re- I read that break as in, like, well, they had to go to commercial. Oh, for and sure, get this, yeah. Get this across to Bart, but I like that, that they make Marge feel bad for it later on. So Bart comes back, but, well, he like... Had, I love, I have a, just a small clip from oh, his, 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 again, talking about beautiful animated sequences, mm. his... Uh, the dream is the best. It's hallucination of like how his whole family thinks of him. This is fantastic, and this is how people like me and maybe you on the internet victimize themselves when they're really being an asshole. <laughs> it's your fault. I'm bald. I'm sorry. It's your fault. I'm old. I'm sorry. It's your fault. I can't talk. Maggie. I'm sorry. It's your fault. America has lost its way. I'm sorry. 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 So most of this, I, I should have gotten that clip is like Bart is on camera is like yeah and I just want to say I still won't apologize because fuck you yeah <laughs> if you want to know what David Silverman's animation looks like mm-hmm. use this scene as your guide because like the expressions the camera angles the, the, the movements like the, the the fingers pointing in at you'll, Bart you'll like, at least see it in the album art I love it yeah it's it's beautiful get closer and closer to his mm-hmm. eyes yeah it's just yeah, it's, they it's don't beautiful. do this anymore ever. I, just, I screen capped this for Twitter. Like I was like, I was pulling all the most insane like expressions because mm-hmm. there's a, there's a, this great pan. Mm-hmm. It's not it's a, beautiful. It's not even a straight horizontal pan. It's like it's yeah. like, it's like a I don't know like a rainbow pan across know, a bunch if of you faces. Know me, I've been capturing animated stuff for so long for panning sequences. I did it in the first episode of The Simpsons for Cartoon Christmas, but I love stitching together animation pans. I'm I like, tried doing that. It's today. impossible. It is impossible. It's impossible like, because it moves. It moves in like a, a, a waveform. It is. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that's to go back to where. Homer mm-hmm. is like initially so yeah it's like an amazing piece of animation it really is yeah I so then Bart goes on the roof and I also love the bit where he says like Dude. the boy who nobody wanted just won the Super Bowl <laughs> did you guys have a place where like balls and toys went where they I were yeah. unsalvageable I, I, yeah, I had toys that went under a couch or something yes we had a we don't we, there's no basements in Florida because it's wet uh, and so if we had a deck uh, and if anything fell through like I had got the mad scientist kit you remember that shit you oh, set right, up a skeleton yeah. and then build a fleshy oh, est- yeah. fleshy stuff that you can then burn off and then I just Boom! Dropped it in the scale. Everything fell, but like within one hour of having the thing I wanted, it fell. And it's to all. It's still there. My wow. parents still live there. I could, but there's no access to it. Future archaeologists will find. Oh it God! And find yeah. out about Chris Antista. What was this? They made fake bones. Oh, and that. By the way, the dream key sequence mm-hmm. uh, laid out by Eric Stefani. Oh wow! Eric Stefani was still working on the show at that time. Who he quit? Would, no doubt. Yeah, he quit. No doubt to be an animator, mm-hmm. but he still was a. He still made money off of the big no di- no doubt hit album. Like he was a songwriter. Yeah. On oh, or I didn't something. know that. Okay, no, cool. he's like, he so was like he the, got the a, figurehead or organizer of No Doubt. Like yeah. he's and the brother of Gwen Stefani, obviously. On a later commentary, David Silverman will tell the story that he got shipped a gold record to work, and then he's like, <laughs> "I can't do this." There, there are two notes that I have. One that like whenever they flash back to the Simpsons house and this Evergreen Terrace, yeah. there's smoke coming out of everyone's chimney, which is a really elegant and subtle way to convey that this is the holiday. There's a season change. Happening. Yeah, like yeah. well even. You know, even in Florida when it's not hot, like you just build a fire, you just do, you do during Christmas and Thanksgiving. And I, I love that. And then also, like, take, take if you're watching this, take note when Ken Brockman gets in the van, it is a different person. It is oh, not really? Ken Brockman. Okay. Wow. It, it is not Ken Brockman at all. Well, he, he transmogrifies, I guess. No, it's just like, I think just somebody didn't bother. It's just a generic dude with white hair. But like, uh, I see. He's Ken Brockman. There's very specific things to him. And like, it's super close up and it is totally not him. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and then the episode ends with just the same level, of like thirty seconds of sweetness. But uh, I, I really like the scene where Lisa is still on the my roof favorite. with Bart, and like it's great that Bart is like trying to figure out like why he's doing the way, yes. the things he's doing. He doesn't understand why he's impulsive. Everybody should speak out loud their yeah. situation with other people, and it's come to. I think you, everybody can come to the same conclusion. I love this. This is my favorite clip of the whole show, not line of the show. But. Bart, why did you burn my centerpiece? Oh, come on. Was it because you hate me? Or because you're bad. I don't know. I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I enjoyed it. And I don't know why I'll do it again. Just tell me you're sorry. Why should I? Bart, the only reason to apologize is if you look deep down inside yourself and you find a spot. Something you wish wasn't there. Because you feel bad, you hurt your sister's feelings. Leave me alone. Just look. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Looking for a new spot. No, 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 no. Still checking. Oh, this is so stupid. I'm not going to find anything. Just because I wrecked something she worked really hard on and I made her. Cr- uh oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lisa. Apology accepted. I do yeah. like that Lisa we, forces empathy on Bart. Like, yes. just yeah. just go through this process. You need, you need to. to. And he's I like, I would do it again. Like, I don't know why I, I do yeah, these I'm things. Going I'm going to do, this, do again. this again. I promise you that. Yeah, but yeah. And I also liked her that she blames herself for not taking. Uh, uh, sorry, I wrote it down exactly. I failed to take his abuse with good humor. Like, that's how she blames herself. <laughs> that sounds for. like the what March is about Stanley Kowalski in the Streetcar <laughs> musical. Can't you take it with gentle good humor? Yeah, like I do feel like this is a very Bart gets an F persona of Bart, yeah. where he's like he doesn't like being who he is but he also doesn't understand who he is so he's just trying to like just go with it as it happens Mm. but Lisa is forcing him to like deconstruct Bart as a as a person and figure out like why he does things this was this like I said this was my favorite episode to date because I think it's full of hilarious stuff it's a real funny episode but it really gets in with the family and it's him being an unhappy family that's mean to each other but still loves each other in the end. Like, it's full of passive aggressiveness and love. Yeah, and I like that the last scene is them eating turkey sandwiches, like, at midnight or whatever, which is, like, what you do yeah. over the holiday. Well, now they'd like... be lined up for Black Friday, am I right? <laughs> They'd be stomping and crushing each other for Xbox One. That was the number uh, one ones. gift of 1990. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Uh, Super Nintendo? Nope. No, nope. no, one more year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a Genesis, Jesus. perhaps? Yeah, maybe a Genesis. Tickle me, Groucho. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nope, sorry. Was that was wrong. Cabbage Patch Kids? <laughs> no, no, to say Turtles, the secret I word, and I love Turtles. you. <laughs> it had to be Ninja Turtles. So I guess that wraps up for this episode of Talking Simpsons. I am Bob Servo on Twitter. Please follow me and let me know if you like the show. I also do another show called Retronauts. It's a yeah. weekly classic gaming podcast, and it's so much work, but I love doing it. All these guys have been on it, so please listen mm-hmm. to it. Uh, mm-hmm. you guys, please plug things. Um, LaserTimePodcast.com. Um, we write a ton of fun stuff out there. That's where the Simpsons episodes air. If you want to go directly to the Simpsons episodes, the archive, it's TalkingSimpsons.com. Uh, but LaserTimePodcast.com, home to a bunch of other podcasts, Cape Crisis, the comic book show, Video Game Apocalypse, the weekly video game show, uh, VG Empire, it just doesn't stop, Cape Crisis, Laser Time, uh, Blunder yeah. Lizard, let's see if that comes back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and Patreon.com slash Laser Time, that's how you hear the first season of this, where we talk all about the first 13 episodes of Simpsons, it's exclusive to that, there's Cape Crisis, comic book podcast too, all these great things laser time podcast you want to be a potter t- <laughs> yes yeah. and i should say please review us on itunes yeah, on the itunes great. music store it only takes a second to give us five stars or let us know what you think about the show and that helps us a lot because we're trying to crush every simpsons podcast we want to be number yeah. one people yeah. we will destroy everyone in our wake no one's got the fucking bulls <laughs> to tackle every episode of the simpsons in 30 minutes no one is nerdier than, than us <laughs> at least i think so so we'll see you next time for a brand new episode of talking simpsons later everybody